Thank you very much for allowing me to present some elements of my research. Um, I'm a respiratory and intensive care trainee and a uh, MRC Clinical Research Fellow. So my interest lies in acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is an inflammatory condition of the lungs um, caused by uh, bilateral infiltrates um, and <coughs> hypoxemia, which causes acute respiratory failure, of which mortality still remains higher despite protective ventilation um, strategies and high mobility with long-term sequelae in terms of psychological and neuromuscular deficits. There's still currently no test to identify patients who are at high risk of developing ARDS, and there are no therapeutic strategies. The most common uh, causes of acute lung injury are remotely are sepsis and directly pneumonia. So this is a seminal picture that's put up in most ARDS conferences, and which shows the pathophysiology of ARDS. And on the left there, you can see the normal alveolus. And on the right, what happens is there is overwhelming inflammation with breakdown of the endothelial uh, and epithelial barrier with type 1 epithelial cell necrosis, influx of fluid overload, neutrophil migration into the alveolus, and uh, inflammatory dysregulation. So why vitamin D? So vitamin D biology, normally in humans, we uh, get most of our vitamin D from sunshine where it's hydroxylated once in the liver and then the second time to the active form in the kidneys by 1-alpha one, hydroxylase. Um, and this then, the active form 125 vitamin D diffuses through or via endocytosis into the nucleus and binds to the vitamin D receptor, and which binds to its ligand RxR. Now normally, classically, we know that this controls calcium homeostasis, but we've shown from our microarray data and also experimental evidence that there's also influence on antimicrobial peptide release as well as apoptosis and proliferation. There's been a resurgence in vitamin D um, research over the last 20 years, um, and there are some believers and non-believers out there. But what we can see from evidence is that the vitamin D receptor is found constitutively on monocytes and macrophages, and it does affect the adaptive immune system as well. The, the epithelial barrier is also able to convert um, into active vitamin D. Um, so there seems to be some sort of local uh, mechanism going on, which can also be activated in the short term. So why vitamin D and ARDS? The experimental evidence. It can affect antimicrobial peptide production and increase uh, LL37 release, which not only affects this, but also promotes epithelial um, barrier repair monocyte differentiation into more anti-inflammatory phenotype, uh, dampening NF-kappa beta signaling, um, promoting regulatory T cells, driving MMP um, production, which could be negative or, or, or positive, um, reducing neutrophil addition to the endothelium, vitamin D binding protein, the main carrier protein, having acting scavenging um, properties, autophagy, but we don't know how this might be affected in, in ARDS, and also preventing uh, and promoting barrier integrity. There's been large observational data suggesting that vitamin D deficiency is common in critically ill patients. And recent studies suggest that pre-hospital vitamin D deficiency is a predeterminant and a predictor of sepsis and increased mortality. And we know that bacteriemic sepsis seems to be more common in the, vitamin, uh, in the winter months when vitamin D levels are at the lowest. However, is this cause or effect? We've previously shown that ARDS patients are severely vitamin D deficient compared to patients that are at risk of ARDS. These are patients undergoing esophagectomy or at high risk of developing ARDS compared to normal controls. And in our uh, direct model of uh, acute lung injury in uh, the IT intratracheal LPS model in mice, we've shown that um, there is exaggerated lung injury post IT LPS at 48 hours. And this is evidenced by both uh, an increase in permeability index uh, marker of type 1 epithelial damage and data not shown here in terms of inflammatory cytokines. And this correlates with the reduction in oxygen saturations in these mice, and this can be rescued by giving them vitamin D. So the aim of this particular project was to investigate the local and systemic effects of vitamin D deficiency in a Murai model of se sepsis-induced lung injury, so a remote model, uh, where we can predictly time the insult. So Wild-type mice were fed a diet devoid of vitamin D for six weeks uh, from weaning prior to the sequel ligation and puncture procedure, which induces poly polymicrobial sepsis. 
Now, initially, we aimed to um, keep these mice alive for 48 hours, as this seemed to be the ideal time to see lung injury in these, patient, in these mice. However, what we found was that our VDR knockout mouse was unstable and would die after this procedure fairly quickly. And the dietary de deficient mice seemed to die within 24 hours. So we've had to come to a compromise of 16 hours to see what we can do here. Blood, bronchial alveolar lavage fluid, and peritoneal lavage fluid was collected. Analyzed cell infiltrates by flow cytometry, uh, protein analysis, and bacterial load was measured. This shows that, dietary that we were able to, to induce vitamin D deficiency in these mice. What we don't know is what is vitamin D deficiency in mice, but we can see that compared to the non-deficient and the dietary deficient, there is sufficient uh, significant decrease. This didn't affect the calcium, but there was a significant increase in the PTH. The main findings of this study show that the bacterial load in each compartment was significantly raised in vitamin D deficient mice. This is both the peritoneal blood uh, serum and bronchial, uh, uh, bronchial fluid. This correlated with protein permeability, which was increased in both the peritoneal and bronchial lavage fluid. And also in terms of the cell infiltrates in the peritoneum. In terms of the peritoneal infiltrates, we can see that there was an increase in, neut uh, in apoptotic neutrophils in the peritoneum, which may suggest neutrophil uh, apoptotic dysregulation or defect in the clearance of these apoptotic neutrophils. However, this model did not demonstrate lung injury. We can see that there was no neutrophil um, alveolitis, and also there was no change in the inflammatory cytokines in all three compartments. So I think I've shown here the difficulties in this model in the sense that there's a variability in surgery. It's been very difficult to even get the end numbers that I have. It's taken two years to get to this stage. And the timing of lung injury is not adequate. And it may be that the lung injury is localized to the vascular and interstitial compartments. And so I've got some histo uh, histochemistry that I need to do on some lung resections. Uh, and obviously, there's been the problem of loss of animals. I've been thinking about the possible me mechanisms. And what I've done is, in resting in mice, uh, recruited the granul granulocytes from the peritoneum and performed a phagocytosis assay. And you can see that giving, giving these mice vitamin D uh, pretreatment three days before in the sufficient mice seems to upregulate phagocytosis, but not in the deficient mice. And I'm not sure whether this is because of a problem with a threshold effect that we're not getting the vitamin D level high enough, or that there's a, a suppression in the 1-alpha hydroxylase in these vitamin D, or a suppression in the, in the expression of VDR. And again, looking further into the possible mechanisms, what I've done is isolated some primary human alveolar macrophages from lung resection samples and uh, incubated them with ARDS bowel fluid and shown that it does suppress ephrocytosis and that vitamin D can rescue this. So in summary, I think I've demonstrated that vitamin D deficiency significantly increases the bacterial load systemically, locally, and within the lung. This is associated with an increase in tissue permeability with that throughout all three compartments. And this data may support pre-existing vitamin D deficiency as a determinant of bacteremic sepsis. However, at this time point, this model does not replicate the hallmarks of acute lung injury. And the possible mechanisms could be a defect in phagocytosis and clearance of apoptotic neutrophils. I'd like to thank my supervisors, Dr. David Thicke and Professor Gavin Perkins, Dr. Lax for teaching me the murine um, techniques, um, and also the great collaboration we have between um, Birmingham and Warwick University in terms of our ARDS network, and my funding body, MRC, and everyone in the lab. Thank you very much. Many thanks. John, would you like to kick off? You just need a microphone. There's a huge debate on what you actually mean by vitamin D deficiency across the water as well as in the UK. Can you tell us what you mean by vitamin D deficiency in man anyway and why? In man, I mean deficiency in the 25D3. No, 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 the level I'm talking about. The level. About. So, I, what I would mean in man, I would mean a, a level less than 75 nanomoles per litre. But that would, be, that would be an insufficiency. And if we're talking about a deficiency, it would be less than 50. Um, and I think what we're finding, especially in this cohort of patients in ARDS, that we only really see a difference in um, the outcomes and changes in 
the, bio, uh, the cell function is when the deficiency is severely deficient, so less than 20 nanomoles. Um, so I think there, there are different, different um, groups in, in, these, in, in this cohort. Um, and I think what we'll find is that it's only when you're severely deficient that that's, the, that's where the benefit will lie, if there is any. Next question. Um, a mechanism that occurred to me for the effect on permeability would be an effect on vascular endothelial growth factor. Um, and your supervisor, I think, worked on that in the past. Yes. Um, uh, have you studied the different, the, the pro-permeability and anti-permeability isoforms and seen whether vitamin D has any effect on those? No, I haven't, no. And a question from the middle. Thanks. Although it's not a pure model of pneumonia, um, the bacterial load in the lung was quite significant, and actually the biggest difference between vitamin D deficient and non-deficient mice was in the load in the lung. Although neutrophil counts were normal and phagocytic ability was normal, I was wondering if you're able to isolate the neutrophils anyway, whether or not you think the generation of ROS species intracellularly might have a role in the deficient mice. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting, and that's something that we could be looking at. And that's some of the, some of the work that other members of our group who look at neutrophil function in sepsis and pneumonia are looking at ROS production. You showed these effects on um, phagocytosis, that you found them in, in vitamin D deficient animals of vitamin D, but not uh, in vitamin D uh, insufficient animals. And you said that possibly might be due to the fact that one alpha hydroxylase might be downregulated. So what, what are the findings in, in vitamin D deficiency? Does this lead to a downregulation? Well, this, this is what I don't know, and I've, I've got the samples that I need to run in terms of looking at the genetics and the upregulation and, and the PCR. And I also have human macrophages as well that that's the, the work that I'm doing now to complete the work for my PhD and um, to see how the vitamin D and the treatment is affecting the downregulation of the 1-alpha hydroxylase and the vitamin D receptor and po potential other epimers of, of vitamin D um, which are implicated in this. Yeah, it will be important to look at this at pre-receptor and receptor level. Okay. If there are no further questions, no more torturing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> then many thanks again. Yeah.